When Xbox announced the closure of their online store, it caused absolute chaos. Prices went from being very reasonable, in fact, for what many would call cheap, to unbelievably expensive. We're at the point now where I would say that the Xbox 360 is no longer a cheap and cheerful console to collect for. Now, while everyone foams at the mouth at the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 and scrambles to try and get every game into their collection before it's too late, I'm actually going to skip forward a generation here and look at the Xbox One and the PS4. They are largely, anyway, still supported by developers. People will still release brand new games for this generation, which is absolutely mind-blowing given that we are four, nearly five years into the ninth generation of consoles. I'm almost certain that Call of Duty, the one that's out this year in November, will release on the PlayStation 4. That is crazy to say in itself, because of course, as soon as we're around 12 months into a new generation, the old one tends to get left behind unless you're EA Sports, and of course you will milk that thing for all it's worth. But that seems to be what everyone is doing at the moment. Of course there are plenty of reasons for it, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a little bit weird. With that out of the way, why am I talking about the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4? I've seen one or two people say that they're now collecting for the PlayStation 4, and of course I've seen it with the Xbox One as well, a couple of people mentioned, well I'm going to start collecting for the Xbox One, and they want to get in there before the prices boom. It's actually cheaper to collect for the Xbox One than it is for the 360, which again is crazy to say out loud. Now, in my opinion, given that these systems are still supported, we are a very, very long way from these platforms booming. The question, of course, is will they boom? And I don't have the answer. In fact, I would say that no one has the answer. No one can even make an educated guess because we're kind of in uncharted territory here. The Xbox One wasn't backward compatible with Xbox 360 at launch. The PlayStation 4 still isn't backward compatible with the PlayStation 3 because of the architecture. Why am I saying this? Well, it's easy these days for someone to buy a Series X or a PlayStation 5 and go back and play the older generation because they are instantly backward compatible out of the box. There's no updates required. You can just stick a disc in and away you go. We never had that with the eighth generation. You couldn't just stick an Xbox 360 game into an Xbox One at launch. It wouldn't work. And it was the same with the PlayStation. And it still is. Now, of course the Xbox One has a large backward compatible library after an update and a lot of pressure from fans. It's still not 100% and there are a still large number of games you can't play on an Xbox One, but we have a vast library. But that's where, of course, this generation differs and where we can't compare it because, like I mentioned, you can walk in and buy an Xbox One game and a Series X game, go home and play them both on your Series X without even worrying about compatibility. And, of course, it's the same for PS5 and PS4. The other thing worth mentioning, of course, is that these two systems are still supported. New games are still released for them. You walk into any CEX store and they take up an awful lot of the floor space. So we're about four or five years behind in that sense. Once they drop the eighth generation, then prices might start to go up, but for the time being anyway, these platforms are cheap. Now I wouldn't recommend you go into CEX and buy a console unless you have a surplus of voucher, but if you walk into any CEX store now, you can buy a 500 gig PlayStation 4 console for £95. And it'll cost you £75 if you want to buy an Xbox One, and of course there are models above this, but if you go on eBay for example, you can pick up an Xbox One console for anywhere from 30 to 40 quid, and they may even come with some games. And I haven't done extensive research, but it looks like you can pick up a PS4 for about 60 quid and of course there are ways to get these cheaper you could go on auctions vinted the car boot sale of the internet is probably a good place to go facebook marketplace i would imagine you'd be able to pick one up for about 50 quid and you're in you are through the door you have a eighth generation video game console capable of playing a vast array of games and of course the games themselves they're not expensive they are the cheapest they're likely to ever be and i've spoken about this a lot on this channel but the xbox one in my opinion will give you the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to building a video game collection. It used to be the Xbox 360 had all the cheap games and there was a lot of quality there. It's probably just as cheap now to go out and buy an Xbox One as it is to buy an Xbox 360. In fact, in some cases, I would imagine it's probably cheaper to buy an Xbox One. They are far cheaper these days than Xbox 360 games. They do look a lot better than Xbox 360 games for the most part. And if you're on a budget, it is probably the very best video game 
console to collect for these days. This does kind of go hand in hand with the PS4 as well. I would argue that it's kind of the same, although the games on the Xbox are cheaper than that on the PlayStation 4. And of course, that does come down to a large number of factors. The biggest one is probably Game Pass. So for the low, low price of £1, if you've never signed up to it before, you get a whole host of games instantly available to you if you're not necessarily into collecting physical, or maybe you are, but you just want that hit straight away, £1 will get you access to hundreds of games via Game Pass. Of course, you'd have to look at things like exclusives, PlayStation versus Xbox, of course, and in my opinion, even though I am somewhat of an Xbox fanboy these days, the PlayStation will far outweigh that of the Xbox when it comes to exclusives. There are just better games exclusively available on the PlayStation than there are on the Xbox. Of course, it will entirely depend on the type of gamer that you are and the games that you enjoy, but for the games that I enjoy and that I could see myself playing, I would probably say that the PlayStation has the better exclusives, and that will probably have to sway your decision which way you decide to go. Would you prefer to have the option of playing Game Pass and the cheaper physical games, or would you rather have those exclusives on the PlayStation, and ultimately, in my opinion anyway, have more value going forward? What I mean by that is I see PlayStation 4 games being far more expensive in the long term, as they are now anyway, than the Xbox side of things. And that's why a lot of people will collect for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 above the Xbox One and the Series X, just because they're going to be worth more in the future. Personally, I'm not really that bothered if my games ever become valuable. It's nice to have. I love going through my 360 collection and seeing games that I've bought for a fiver now worth 40, 50 quid, but it's not why I bought them. I bought them to play them. I love the fact that my room is now turning into somewhat of a blockbuster video game section. Back in the day, we used to go in on a Friday to pick a game to play for the weekend. That's the feeling that I get every time I walk into this room. I look at the shelves now and I'm thinking, right, what am I going to play this weekend and I'm looking at these games and I can pick any single one of them off the shelf which is obviously something I couldn't do if I had a sealed collection for example. It's also something I couldn't do if I didn't have a physical collection. Yes I'd be able to do the equivalent on Game Pass which like I mentioned does give you a vast array of games to choose from but they don't have everything on there. I wouldn't say everything but a large number of those video games that you can sort of half see behind me are tailored to my taste. I bought them because I fancied playing them or I have nostalgia for them. And you can build out your own library, of course, and that's the same with any system through time. But when it comes to the eighth generation, they have an unbelievable amount of choice. There is absolutely something for everyone on either the Xbox or the PlayStation. And the price point right now is fantastic. So even though the title does create a sense of urgency and you do have to sort of take advantage of this while the prices are down, I don't actually see the prices of these systems going up anytime soon. As I've mentioned, we are about four or five years behind where we realistically should be at this point, given the fact that these systems are still supported. It took 10 years after the launch of the Xbox One for the Xbox 360 prices to go crazy. So if we take that into consideration, we're looking at what, 2029, 20, 2030 before the prices of these Xbox One and PlayStation 4 games are supposed to go crazy, given the timeline. But that's not quite true, is it? Because like I mentioned, we're four or five years behind where we should be. So that kind of takes us forward to 2030. 34, 35-ish. But of course, on top of that, the PlayStation 5 and the Series X are completely 100% backward compatible with the PS4 and the Xbox One. So what does that mean? I've got no idea. Does that mean it's going to stretch the longevity to 2040, 2045? Is it going to make any difference whatsoever? I really couldn't tell you. So the roadmap is completely under a fog of war at the moment. We've got no idea what's going to happen in the future. So even though the title would suggest you need to get on this before it's it's too late, you do have an awful lot of time to act on this, but there's no time like the present. If you don't currently have a games console or a system that you collect for specifically, and you enjoy playing video games, you don't really know what to start collecting. In my opinion, the eighth generation, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, are the new best consoles to collect for. It used to be the 360 and the PS3, and don't get me wrong, the Xbox 360 is still my favorite console, but it's unbelievably difficult to deny that that is now an expensive system to collect for, whereas the 8th generation is on the ground floor. Let me know in the comments section what consoles you collect for. Have you got your fingers in a lot of pies? You collect a little bit of everything, or maybe you're niche to one specific platform. If you want to check out a series video from me, you can click here, and until the next time, goodbye.